thank you to the organizers here for inviting me to speak today. Um, uh, the topic of my title um, is the challenges for the MTPL insurance market and looking to the future. Um, I think I might cover some of what Akif Bey has already talked about, but hopefully I will give a slightly different perspective and, and talk about some of other issues that we see um, as a consultancy firm. So, um, as Akif Bey mentioned in his, his presentation, there are various aspects of the Turkish insurance market. Um, the first one um, is the growth of the market, and that has been very strong over the past, and I think we'd expect this to continue over the future. So, our average uh, growth rate is 17.9% in, in local uh, currency terms. So, even allowing for inflation, that's still a very substantial annual growth rate for the premiums. Um, the, the second issue on, on, on the right-hand side is, as Akif Bey mentioned, the negative technical profit margin on the MTPL business. So the motor liability business traditionally has been loss-making, and we see 30 40% loss uh, margins, CORs of 130 140% year after year, um, and significant cumulative losses um, from, from that portfolio. And tied with that, again, we have this cross-subsidy between different lines of business. It says, my family can claim for that payment as a third party to my accident, even if they weren't involved. Now, the new general terms and conditions remove that as, a, as an issue. Um, and and the, thir the third thing was the calculation methodology for the uh, injury claims. So this was also set into the terms and conditions. Now, the challenge uh, when these terms and conditions were released, uh, I think they were positive and they solidified a lot of the things that were necessary in the industry, but um, there was the risk that they'd be challenged in the court because they weren't backed up by law. And so the thing that's changed this week, we hope, is, um, is that that law will be, will be put through and it will be approved um, and it will mean that these um, finally go through. Um, the other significant changes, so the currency fluctuations have a significant impact as they do in, in, in many markets on the um, cost of uh, damaged vehicles and spare parts. So devaluation of the local currency means an inflation effect on the cost of spare parts. Um, the TSEB, uh, the, the Turkish Insurance Association, has been um, working hard on um, the approval of, um, of uh, equivalent spare parts, which should alleviate some of these inflationary pressures. Um, I think they, they, that will come through as more and more of these equivalent spare parts become available and more become licensed, and then hopefully the cost of those equivalent spare parts will come down. Um, and then finally, at the end of 2015, um, there was a um, surprise uh, by the, the Turkish uh, government, or not so much a surprise, I think during 2015, um, we knew it was likely to happen. Um, but there was a 30% um, increase in the Turkish minimum wage. Um, so a, a lot of low, lower paid people in Turkey are um, very happy with um, a significant increase to their income. Um, the challenge for the insurance industry uh, is twofold. One is there is the significant increase in, um, in the amounts, the claim amounts for uh, the damage claims for the repair of the vehicles, for the labor, um, which will come through in the next year. Um, but more significantly, um, every or 80% or 70 or 80% of the injury claims um, are calculated based on the value of the minimum wage. And what that meant was for every claim that was currently open uh, in front of a Turkish court, um, the amount of that claim would increase by approximately 30%, give or take. So 80% of the claims increasing by 30% for claims already open in front of the court meant a very significant increase in the um, injury claim settlement, which contributed to the 2015 challenges in, in profitability. So uh, I think we've seen these numbers um, already. So this was the motor liability performance in, in 2015. So um, a 4.8 billion uh, Turkish lira of premium, which is an increase of 9% over 2014. Um, 4 billion in paid claims over 40%, I think we saw 50% um, of these claims are now bodily injury, which compares to 15% uh, in 2010. Um, 
and a significant increase, 1.9 billion increase in reserves. Um, and then with the other uh, elements, this resulted in a 2.3 billion technical loss in the liability, uh, MTPL branch and a combined operating ratio of about 145%. Um, the other figure that's, that's interesting is the total claims reserve. So the total reserves for the industry are 6.5 billion Turkish lira. And we'll come to that in a minute why that number is important. And around 90% of this amount is for bodily injury claims. And that compares to about 40% of the equivalent amount in 2010. So why are the reserves interesting? Um, well, we see this figure of 6.5 billion. And what we've done is we've compared um, all the companies uh, in, the, in the market, uh, and we focused on the larger ones here. And we have given them a ranking depending on, we, we've looked at their exposure over the last 10 years, and we have um, calculated how much bodily injury exposure and how much damage exposure do we think they're exposed to. Um, and then we've compared this to the amount of reserves that they're holding. And what we've seen is there is a wide range of different reserves that are being held by different companies in the market. So these are based on the reported balance sheets at the end of 2015. We see the market reserve is 6.5 billion. If the market was reserved at the same level as um, these lower reserved companies, then the market reserve would be around 5 billion, 5.5 billion. But if the market was reserved on the same basis as one of the stronger reserved companies, we would see um, a significant increase in the amount of reserves held by the market. So this gives a range of um, different reserve strengths um, for different companies in the market. So one of the um, changes in the, in the reporting regulation in uh, 2015, because of these increases in reserves and the challenges the market was having over profitability and uh, capital, um, the Treasury um, put in place a smoothing on reserves, which allowed companies to reduce the reserve amounts they were holding. Um, so if we remove that smoothing from the, the company's um, balance sheets to get a true reserve, then, um, then we get this blue line here. Obviously, the reserves increase substantially, and we would see the market reserve increase to 8.5 billion, which is an additional 2 billion of reserves uh, in the market. So compared to the 6.5 billion, this is a very big increase. And compared to the 2.3 billion of loss, this is a doubling of the, of the losses in the market in 2015. We could also consider what would happen if the market increased their reserving strength to be more similar to the most reserved, uh, the strongest reserved companies. Um, and this would be a difference of somewhere between 3 and 6 billion Turkish lira. And we can start to compare that to the amount of equity in the market, which is about 7.4 billion um, Turkish lira. So substantial um, proportion of the, the equity. So this is another reason why um, Turkish insurers are having challenges. It's not just in the re reported reports. There are unreported um, figures as well. Okay, let's talk about the, uh, the price rises. I think we've seen some of these figures already. So. Um, between 2010 and 2011, we saw a 6% uh, increase in prices, uh, average annual price increase. Uh, what the graph is showing, the red line shows the average monthly price uh, for MTPL, and then the, um, the bars around it show the range of prices uh, on average charged by each insurance company. And what we saw between 2012 and 2013 um, was a significant increase in prices driven by uh, increases in reserves in, in those years. Um, but we also saw an increase in the range of prices given by different insurance companies. So the lower end did not increase as significantly as the, as the top end of prices. But then after those price increases in, in 2012 um, to 2013, um, the market really stagnated. It went back into a um, confidence phase um, and companies thought the pain that we had in 2012 is over, uh, we've increased prices sufficiently, um, but because of a lot of the uncertainty around the actual claims cost because of the long tail of these liabilities, um, there was this sort of false confidence in the performance of the market. 
Um, and that lasted until the beginning of 2015 or just at the end of, of 2014 where we saw some significant price movement. And then this, uh, the, the, the pain that, that was anticipated coming through in 1415, plus the changes in regulations, um, plus the, um, the minimum wage increase resulted in this very substantial increase. So we estimate 104% of, uh, of price increases between uh, the beginning of 2015 and the beginning of 2016. So what about the future? Um, so we've had these substantial price increases. Um, alongside this, um, on the bottom right, we talk about the change in the characteristics of the market. So the MTPL prices are rapidly increasing, but at the same time, the Casco prices, the, the damage insurance prices are coming down substantially and a lot more increased competition to that market. So one of the, this cross-subsidy equation that, that is there in the Turkish market has been for a number of years is starting to rewrite itself and we would expect that there's more going to be more of a balance between the different motor um, products. Um, we've also seen companies improving their settlement um, speed and we hope that the the new law will also help to improve settlement speed by requiring customers to come uh, or claimants to come directly to the insurance company which should improve the speed of settlements for the insurers to reduce their risk and uncertainty and also for claimants so they get their, their claimant faster. Um, one of the unique things or, or one of the great things about the Turkish insurance market is its ability to utilize data as a market and I think one of the things that they could be doing is looking into the Mernis system, which is the, uh, the, the Turkish um, population database, and combining it with police reports um, to search for all of the people that died in, in vehicle accidents, um, and also looking for injured people using the, the police reports to increase the speed of that reporting time proactively. Um, I think the, uh, the, the other thing that the market is doing is an increase in, in focusing on the risk um, and away from focusing on volume. Um, so one of the challenges in the Turkish market is um, that companies believe the growth story, which is, is true, and they chase growth. Um, and in the good times, they're chasing after growth um, to, to try and grow into these markets. But then when the, when the challenges come on profitability, um, then they can focus on pulling away from markets instead of focusing on making money from those markets. And I think that's changed in the last couple, uh, few years. Um, more and more companies are focusing on the bottom line results and making sure the margins are appropriate. So they're writing business, but they're w at appropriate margins rather than running towards volume or running away from volume. Um, and then last but not least, certainly not least, is the uh, confirmation in law of the the, terms, uh, the general conditions. So hopefully this will, be, this will be finally confirmed, but it will have a significant benefit in the removal of these at-fault claims um, and also benefits in the certainty of calculation, which should improve the, the certainty for the business. So I think in conclusion, um, we should expect to see greater certainty in the losses of, uh, of the MTPL business, and we hope that will result in greater certainty around pricing greater appetite for um, the MTPL market and the MTPL risk in Turkey. Um, and that should lead to more stability, uh, hopefully. Thank you very much.